What's up, survivalists? Malcolm here with Survival Know How, and today we're talking all about gas masks. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. I put out content all about prepping, survivalism, and self-reliance. So if you're new here, subscribe and hit that little bell icon to stay current on my latest content. Today I'm going to talk about gas masks. I'm going to go over a couple of different features and functions and what you want to look for when buying a gas mask, how you can get a really cheap gas mask, and what kind of filter to get for your gas mask. Here we go. So as many of you know, I spent 11 years in the Air Force, and during that time, I went through a lot of CBRNY training. That stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Training. So we used to have to do these exercises where we'd wear gas masks and full chem gear, and we had to run through rigorous things and test for uh, radioactive levels and all this crazy stuff. So I have a lot of experience with the gas masks, and I'm pretty familiar with how to use them and how to wear them. So when I was in the Air Force, this is the exact gas mask that I use and I was trained on. I actually found this one in an abandoned building on an Air Force base and I snatched it. Um, this is the MCU-2. And there's a lot of features that I really like about this gas mask I want to point out to you guys real quick. So one thing I like about this gas mask is the full visor right here. So instead of individual lenses, you have a full visor so it doesn't impair your vision nearly as much. This one also comes with a kind of a scratch proof protective lens here. And this can actually snap right off if you wanted to take that off. That's pretty important because when you're wearing a gas mask, it's pretty clunky and bulky. You're going to hit your head on things and you don't want it to permanently affect the actual lenses in there. You know, having this protective um, layer here is pretty useful. All right, this gas mask also comes with a watering tube right here. So you'd have a special kind of canteen that this would plug into a hose and you keep this on your hip or something and you can actually drink while wearing this. And this is pretty important. It gets incredibly hot when you're wearing all your chem gear and you're wearing a gas mask like this. And being able to hydrate while you're doing all this stuff is a really, really nice feature. So absolutely, if you guys are buying gas mask, um, having one that has an external uh, adapter for a canteen is pretty, pretty important. So this part here, and I believe this part here as well, is actually there to help amplify your voice so that you can actually speak while wearing this gas mask and that, that sound can come through and people can kind of hear you. You're still gonna sound pretty muffled, but it's much better than somebody who doesn't have this feature on their gas mask. And for this one, I believe you can actually buy an adapter for this that actually amplifies your voice coming out of there. So for the filter type, this takes a NATO 40 millimeter filter. All right, so NATO has standardized the filter size. So all of NATO countries in the US, we use a 40 millimeter um, threading. That's really referring to this part right here. And this is the most common threading that you find in gas masks in the world. So if you buy a, um, a gas mask from like Israel or Switzerland or Canada or something, most likely I can almost guarantee it's going to have this 40 millimeter threading, which is what you really want. And this screws in right here like this and you just screw it right in there. So when you're storing a gas mask, you really want to store it like this with the straps inverted and on the front of the gas mask, all right? So this is how you want to have it. And in the Air Force, we used to have a little case right here on our sides, just like this. And we used to do drills and they would time us and I forget what, I think it was like four seconds that we had to be able to open this patch up, put on our mask, strap it, cinch it on, and then do a, um, a pressure check on that. So I'm gonna kinda quickly demonstrate that for you. And that is the order that you want it to do it in. So you wanna store these upside down like this. You take it in your hand, you press your chin up here, push it up against your face and keep pressure with this hand while you keep keeping this up against your face. You pull the straps over your head, you start cinching them up. So once you have it fully cinched up, the only source of air is gonna be right here. So it has to suck air in through your filter. So what we're gonna do is put a palm of our hand over that and inhale, and that's gonna tell us if we have a good fit or not. If we do that and we can feel air coming in around our face or something, then we know we're not fully cinched in. So let's just pretend I had this here strapped to my hip and let's see how many seconds it would take me to don this gas mask and fully cinch it up.
So there you go, pretty quick. And that is an exercise that you really want to do and you want to time yourself and try to get that amount of time uh, as low as possible. You really want to grab this thing and be able to put it on in a matter of a few seconds. So once again, this is the MCU-2 and this is what the military, US military used for a long, long time, probably since like the 80s or the 90s. Um, and this is a very reliable and, and solid mask right here. And this is something that you may want to consider purchasing. I'll have links down in the description below. So my understanding though is that they're actually uh, transitioning away from these and they have a new type of gas mask. So one thing with this is that when you are wearing this and if you need to change your canister, so these last anywhere between 12 to 24 hours, you know, depending on kind of how dirty the air is. But if you need to change the canister, you have to unscrew it. So you have to hold your breath, unscrew it, fumble around, grab the new one, and then screw it back in. And because of that, you know, there are people who would go through that training and they would pass out or they couldn't hold their breath long enough. So now the Air Force is actually switching over to a new type of gas mask that has two filters, uh, one on either side. And when you unscrew one, it automatically switches over and takes air in from the other filter. So another gas mask that I have is this one here. Now this one I did purchase, and this is called the M40A1. And it's got great reviews online, which is why I purchased it. And again, it has a lot of very similar features as this one it has protective lenses here. Um, and these can be taken out and replaced. It has the little voice box here to help uh, allow your voice to be transmitted. It has a straw that can get attached to a canteen. And it's very similar to this one. Um, the reason why I purchased this one is because this actually comes with a hood as well. And I think that's pretty significant. I think if you are going to buy a gas mask, I would definitely recommend getting one with a hood. And it all depends on what kind of situation you're preparing for. You know, some situations it, you just want to protect your lungs and your eyes and your face. But there's other situations where you don't want stuff to touch your skin. You don't want it to touch your neck and your head and your ears and everything. And you really want to fully uh, kind of protect yourself then I would really recommend getting a hood for your gas mask as well. But this M40A1 does take the same kind of canister as this MCU2, and that's this 40 millimeter threading right here. So I can easily take the canister from this gas mask and attach it to this mask like that. So let's take a look at what this looks like when I don it. And again, if you're gonna buy a gas mask, this is a great exercise to do to have all the straps on the front of the face and just see how long it takes you to fully put on this mask. All right. All right, so this M40A1 is a great option, and this also comes with a carrying case that straps onto your waist, a couple of replacement um, protective screens, and an actual book kind of talking about all the features and everything of the mask itself. So I'll have links to this one down in the description as well. But if you're on a budget, you, you have plenty of options as well. So this here is an Israeli gas mask, and I got this for about $20. And this one's a small, so I can't put it on. You know, I got this one for my kid. But an Israeli gas mask may be a great option for you. These are incredibly common. Israel at one point had enough gas masks for every single man, woman, and child in their entire country. So they had tons and tons of these things in surplus, and they're all brand new, never reused. You know, and a lot of these, I think they're made in like the 80s and the 90s, but they're still in great shape. They're brand new. You know, they're all made out of rubber, so it. It, you don't really have to worry about it getting damaged or anything. Just make sure there's no cracks in the rubber and make sure it can still keep a seal. As long as it can keep a seal, you know, these gas masks, older gas masks, will, will last you a very long time. Now, this doesn't have a few features that the other ones do. For example, it doesn't have the drinking straw. It only has a one layer um, thick glass here. It doesn't come with a hood or anything, but they're incredibly affordable. Like I said, you can find these on Amazon or you can go to cheaperthandirt.com and you get these for anywhere between $20 and $30 for an Israeli gas mask. And the great thing is that Israel also has a surplus of canisters and they're, they're now selling all their older canisters and older gas masks on the secondhand market, which is why you can get them so cheap. 
So you can stockpile these old Israeli gas mask canisters as well, uh, and they're pretty affordable because they had so many of them. And once again, these Israeli gas mask uh, canisters take the same threading as the American gas mask, which is the 40 millimeter. So you can easily interchange all of them and you can buy these things at a pretty affordable rate, much cheaper than buying a brand new one. And with the canisters, you really don't have to worry about these expiring. You know, some people say they pretty much have an indefinite um, lifespan. I don't know if I'd go that far, but all they are is paper and charcoal inside of there. So there's, there's really not much of an expiration date on these. I'm sure these, if as long as the seal has not been broken, I'm sure these things will last an incredibly long time. And personally, I, I've been stockpiling up on them. I buy them in bags like this and um, they, they're, they're perfect. They, they're inexpensive and they fit with all my gas masks. So again, I'll have links to where you can get an Israeli gas mask and get these canisters down in the description below. So it's time for the question of the day. What kind of situation are you guys prepping for that you think you need a gas mask? Are you preparing for, for just for the zombie apocalypse and you just want to have one just in case? Or do you have a nuclear power plant not far from you that you're concerned about? You know, I gotta be honest, I have a nuclear power plant probably about 30 miles away and I am kind of concerned about a Fukushima or a Chernobyl situation happening there as well. I'm really curious why you're interested in buying a gas mask. Leave your answer down in the comment section below this video. And once again, if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I put out content all about prepping, survivalism, and self-reliance. And if you guys want to support the channel and help me make great content like this, you can do one of two things. One, I'll have a link down to my Amazon affiliate store down in the description below. You can shop on there for all your survival and prepping needs, and that kind of helps me out. I get 2 to 4% as a referral fee for using my link. The other way you can support the channel is I opened up a Teespring store. So you can go grab some of my uh, survival know-how merchandise, a t-shirt, or I have a new survivalist t-shirt you can go and buy. And if you buy something from my Teespring store, I get 2 or $3, but everything helps out. Appreciate you watching till the end, and I'll see you over in the next video.